Father God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come together and to fellowship with one another. Father, I thank you for each and every one that's here tonight, Lord. I pray that no one sits in here in pain or in discomfort. I thank you, Father, that as your word goes forth, whatever people need, they shall receive. For you say that signs and wonder shall accompany your word. So we just thank you, Lord. Thank you that your word has set us free. We are saved by your word, by the seed of your word, Lord, and we just love you so much. Father, as we study your word tonight, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely unhindered uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit we thank you father god that we decrease and you increase all of you and none of us anoint our ears to hear our hearts to receive and our spirits to contain your word and father i thank you for thinking through my mind and speaking through my vocal cords all that you'd have me to say to these your sheep and father we'll be ever so mindful to always give you the praise and always give you the glory for it's in jesus name that we pray and everyone in agreement say amen Let's do this tonight. Hold your Bibles up. Praise the Lord. I want you to repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I can have. I am what it says I am. Tonight, I will be taught the uncompromising word of God. My mind shall be renewed. And my life change in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, and, and the word of God is life changing. I don't know about you. That's why I have to have this word every day. I can't go without it. Job's, in Job uh, 23 and 12 says he desired the word more than his necessary food. You know, necessary food is not talking about the snacks that we eat in between. It's talking about the main meal, you know, and that's how we got to get. We got to we got to get to where this word becomes more important to us than anything else. We need to if you don't find time to do nothing else, you need to find time to spend with God. Do you know when you're reading the word a lot of time, that's when he speaks to you? You know, because uh, a lot of time I hear people say, well, I'm waiting to hear a word from God. Well, he got 66 books of words. You need to get in there and just start reading the word. And I'm telling you, you're going to hear a word from God. He's going to give you a revelation. Amen. All right. We're teaching on the, on the series called The Grace of God. That's why I like that song, Amazing Grace. Me too. I love it too. And we're t right now we're talking specifically about the origin of the grace of God. Okay. We say origin is defined as the source. God, we, we, we've, we've read in the Bible in Genesis chapter six verse eight is the first time when the word grace is used but it's not the first time god's grace was given i understand that even though that's the first time the word grace is used in the bible the people the the israelites in the wilderness they experienced god's grace all throughout their journey you know god should have destroyed them a long time ago abraham experienced the grace way before the law all right so god's grace has always been in place because god's grace is a product of god's love all right we said that, that so, so, so that God is the source of, God, of, of grace, all right? Now, we also said that Jesus is the source in which God poured his grace out on us, those of us in the New Testament, all right? In uh, John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace is a person. And I like that truth is connected with grace because that's what grace is all about, the truth. All right. Now, we're going to pick it up on our syllabus here. At the bottom of page six, just above Hebrews chapter one. That's where we at. Therefore. I don't even see that one. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I see what you're talking about. It says, therefore, through Christ Jesus. Y'all got that? It says, therefore, through Christ Jesus, the love and kindness of God and the grace of God appeared toward all men. That's what you're talking about? To save us through the washing and regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Now, we already went to that verse earlier, so we don't have to go there, which is Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. Okay? Now, the nature and the will of God were revealed in the law. But now the nature and the will of God are both revealed 
in Jesus Christ. And we go into Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God has revealed his nature through Jesus. His nature is love. Because we're talking about grace, and grace and truth came through Jesus. God's, God's nature is love. 1 John 4 and 8 says God is love. He doesn't just have love. He's made up of love, okay? That's why I have a problem when people say that God calls them to suffer or bring tragedy in their lives. You hear people say that, you know, that accident that where my wife died, that God did that to uh, strengthen me, to... I'm going to tell you, me and Willie was talking about, I think it was, no, it might have been me and Willie, was talking about Sunday where if people were strengthened through tragedies, we have a lot of strong people walking around here. But tragedy doesn't strengthen you. That's not God. We're strengthened through his word. That's how he strengthens us, through his word. That's the enemy. Because I don't know about you, but if somebody I love died tragically in an accident and they say, and God take the, the credit for it, I don't know if I would want to serve a God like that. You understand what I'm saying? Because God is love. The goodness of the Lord leads to repentance. He don't have to hurt you. I heard one guy on, uh, on, on television a couple years ago. He was on, uh, might have been uh, whatever, 131, it was TBN. And he was saying that uh, his wife died of cancer. And he said that he had been running from God. And God did that to get his attention. Man, my heart just dropped. You know, and, and now watch this. He is a pastor. So if that's what he believed, his congregation is being taught that. You see what I'm saying? That's why we got people out there now upset with God, blaming God. That's why folk won't come to church. You know, I wouldn't want to serve nobody that's killing my people. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. And, and, and the Bible clearly tells us that. You know, in John 10 and 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if stuff are being stolen, killed, and destroyed out your life, he's the one doing it. Because this is, see, this is, I, I have what is called an analytical mind. My mind is always clicking. And, and this is how I think. If God was doing all the bad stuff, then that means Satan is doing all the good stuff because they don't work together. They're on opposite ends of the, of the spectrum, so they don't work together. So if, if God is doing the bad stuff, then that must mean Satan is doing the good stuff. And we know that's not true, right? All right, Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to begin at verse 1, and we're talking about the nature and the will of God are both revealed in Jesus Christ. Starting at verse 1, it says, God who in various times, your Bible may say some three times, God who in various times, in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. You know, in the Old Testament, that's how they live. That's how they move through what the prophets said. And now please understand what I'm about to say. I know prophets still exist. I know that we still have prophets, okay? But I don't live by what a prophet say. You understand what I'm saying? Because... I'm saying this because I know people that have quit jobs and, and did certain things because a man, a prophet, so-called prophet, told them that they needed to do that. But we don't, we don't live by prophecy. Pro what prophecy should do today, what a prophet should do today is confirm what God has already shown you. And prophecy, a person's prophesying, should be edifying. You know, we got a lot of doom and gloom prophets running around here that's speaking doom and gloom in people's life. But I'm telling you, prophecy is edification. It should edify you. It should encourage you. It should build you up and not tear you down. Amen. Verse 2. Well, let's read one again. It says, God who is at various times and in various ways spoken time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by who? His son. That's the word of God, okay? Whom he has appointed heir of all things. Now, the good news about that, when we read that, that he's appointed heir of all things, we need to start shouting. You know why? Because we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So whatever he has inherited, you and I have inherited. He's heir over all things. We are heirs over all things. Oh, y'all missed that one. Oh, just like Jesus 
we're just like Jesus in Christ. Jesus is the son of God. We are children of God. And when we, we got adopted into the family through grace, <laughs> and the way that the Bible teaches on adoption, it uses in Romans chapter uh, 15, it talks about that. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. It talks about that, that we are adopted. And that word adoption is a strong word in the Bible because only God can put himself in you. You know, in the natural, when a person adopts a child, all you can do is give them natural things in your name. You can give them your name and natural things, but God gave himself to us. When, when we got adopted by God, he moved on the inside of us. His seed was planted on the inside of us. So, we, so that word adoption in the Bible is stronger than the word that's used in the world. We, I'm telling you, uh, people don't like to hear this, but Christians are just as strong related as your natural born family. You understand what I'm saying? The blood of Jesus. How, what, what makes a person naturally to, to naturally be related in the, in, in, in the natural? The blood, right? That's how we know that we, we, we are related through our blood. Well, don't you think the blood of Jesus is much more potent than human blood? It is. In Galatians chapter... Three, I don't. I think it might be verse ten, maybe ten, three and ten. Uh, it says, uh, "What is what the verse says is, it says, be good to all, especially the household of faith. Especially, see, it put emphasis on that. Especially the household of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, verse three says, no, verse two has in these last." days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and I like that term being the brightness of his glory because that's saying that God that Jesus came and highlighted God he brought a you know how you put on you know how you got a page like in your Bible and you highlight something and it and the purpose of highlighting it is to make it a more uh revealing to you to bring it up but that's what Jesus did he came and he highlighted God he came in the image of God and, and the brightness of God and he highlighted the things of God he's making God stand out to us all we have to do is just receive amen that's why listen God is God is God is standing uh, sitting with open arms his arms is open waiting for us to come and just just rest in his arm you ever just Got in the presence of God and just laid back, you know, get an image in your mind, just laid back in his arms. Oh, man, that's, 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 that's a wonderful experience. When you feel abandoned, when you feel like nobody don't care about you, when you start, when, when depression starts to come on you, you need to get in the presence of the Lord and just let him hug you. He said, he say, when your mama and your daddy forsake you, he said, I'll take you in. See, but we, but we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't put ourselves in a position to receive from him like that. All God want to do is love us. Alan was talking about when she left, up, left from up here how, about the, the, the love of God. God's love is awesome. He just, I mean, he loved you enough to allow his son to be punished for you. You understand? If he did that, there's nothing he won't do for you. If you, Flo and I was at left Bible study before we got here, we have another Bible study that we go to. And we was talking over there how you can just, I don't know about you, but when, when I get in God's presence, I just pull my heart out to him, okay? And I said that I'm sure glad that God ain't a blabbermouth because there's some stuff I say to him I wouldn't want nobody to know. <laughs> okay? Just between me and him. But I can do that. You know, I'm going to tell you something. You might as well do it because he you know your heart anyway. You know, sometimes people get you upset, right? And, and, and I'm going to tell you, when you get like this, just go in front of God. I went in front of God. God, you know, you know, you know what I want to do. You know, Lord. I mean, ain't no sense in trying to hide it. You know, the flesh was, I mean, I talked to him just like that. Lord, I want to tell him off, you know, but I thank you for strengthening me. I thank you for disciplining me. I thank you for putting your spirit in me so I can do, I mean, you can talk to him like that, you know, it, because I don't know about you, but sometimes I need to vent. I need to let it go because <laughs> I get it in and, and you hold it in. And what happened if you don't let it go, you're going to explode. So you need to let it go. And God is the place that God is the one to do it with. 
Psalm 62 and 8 says, pour your heart out to the Lord. Pour your heart out to God. Talk to him just like you talk to a person. You know, some of us uh, allow anger to, to fester on the inside of us, but you can release that in God's presence. He know your heart anyway. You ain't hiding from God. You ain't hard. You, your thoughts, even if you don't say them, he know your thoughts. So you might as well talk to him, release them in his presence. Amen. I'm telling you, that's a good place to vent. In his presence. <laughs> All right. Says who, verse 3 again says, who being the brightness of his glory. And the express image of his person, talking about God, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself, Jesus by himself, purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now the key word there is by himself, which means that we didn't help to get our sins purged. You can't help to get your sins purged. You can't. It is by grace, through faith. That you are saved and not it, and it's not of yourself. It's a gift of God because no, because you can't be saved. Verse I forgot what verse nine says that you can't not by works or something like that. But you can't be saved through works. And some mm -hmm. reason, for some reason, we got this ideal that we got to help God. Even after we get saved, we still feel like we got to do some work. Well, brother Chuck, I don't know about you, but it's hammered in me. Uh, five, but, but the main verse that he went to for many, many weeks, he went to this verse for many weeks, and I'm going to bring it to your memory. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29, when they say, what works are we to work? How do we work the work of God? And Jesus said, your work is to believe. That's, that's all we got to do. That's our job, to believe. Okay? Now, whether you know it or not, that's hard. That's hard work. You wait till the pressure comes. You think believing for finances is easy. You think believing to receive healing is easy. You wait till you put up, be put up under pressure. So what we need to be working on is building our faith. Not trying to please God, but to build our faith. Not trying to work to please God to get him to love you. He already loved you. You need to build your faith so you can see, so, so that you can receive what his love has already provided for you. That's what faith does. Faith causes us to receive what God has already provided for us. Hebrews 6 and 12 says the promises of God is received through faith and patience. So faith is our receiver. Believing, we have to believe that it's done. We have to believe. So you ain't even fighting the devil. You know that? Some of us, some of us are trying to, but you ain't even fighting the devil. He said we are fighting the good fight of faith. The devil is already defeated. But what you're fighting to is to believe that he is defeated. That's the fight that you're doing. You understand? He's already, Jesus already stripped him, spoiled him. I was listening to a uh, preacher was saying that in, uh, in, in, in Colossians chapter 3, where it talks, in verse 15, where it talks about, 2, chapter 2, I mean, verse 15, where it talks about how Jesus spoiled the principalities. That word means to strip. And it comes from when the, in the old times when the soldiers would, when a king would defeat another king, they would parade him through town, letting them know that this king has defeated that king. And you know what else they would do? They would chop off both of his thumbs and both of his toes so that he couldn't hold a sword, neither could he stand in battle no more. That's what they did. And that's what Jesus, that's, that's what Jesus did to the devil. He paraded him through. He's already been defeated. But you got to believe that because the devil is such a, 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 a deceiver. He's good at deceiving. And he'll make you think that he's better than God. You got people out there talking about how bad and strong the devil is. How much power the devil got. The only power the devil operating in right now is human power. The power that people give him. He is nothing but he's a deceiver. All right? You understand what I'm saying? See, we are victorious, man. We got, but that's why you got to build your faith up. Because the enemy is going to create situations and circumstances that will cause fear to dominate your life. And if you allow fear to dominate, which is faith in, which is faith in, in reverse, it's a, it's, Kenneth Copeland called it contaminated faith. And that's what it is because you believe in the problem. You got to build your faith up so that you can believe the promise over the problem. When even 
I know I'm, I'm way off what I thought to be teaching. <laughs> Even the, the armor of God, okay, the armor of God. It's one, one of those pieces of armor is the shield of faith, right? All that is, the shield of faith, is you get to a place where you become more, the, the promises of God becomes more real to you than the problem. That's the shield of faith. You got, you believe in the promise over the problem. Our problem being is that we've been leaving the problem over the promise. You know how I know we believe the problem over the promise? Because that's all come out your mouth is the problem. You got to speak the promise. You, you don't even need to mention the problem. You know, when you mention the problem, you're giving place to the problem. You need to mention the promise. And that's all need to come out your mouth. By his stripes I'm healed. My God has supplied all my needs. I have the peace of God. That's what needs to be coming out of your mouth. But we sit around and we talk about everything that's going wrong. And you wonder why you're not getting victory. You got to build your faith up. Amen. All right, that was for somebody. Might be for me, who knows? I'll take it too. All right. Verse 3 again says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. By the word. Now, if we look at what, what, what I just said and look at this term by the word of his power, you better believe God ain't sitting there talking about, boy, that sky might fall. I don't know if the world going to keep spinning. He's not saying that. He spoke it and it's done. You understand? He's holding it up by the word of of his power, the power in his word. He's not going back looking to say, boy, the earth kind of shifted. I wonder, if, I wonder if, the, if the clouds gonna drop out the sky? He's not, but that's what we do. You know, we say, yeah, I trust God. Yeah, my knees are met. But then when it's not, when it don't come through the avenue that you've chosen for it to come through, and when it don't come at the time you've chosen it for it to come, then we start saying, Boy, I wonder, I wonder did, is, is, is God going to really do it? You, know? you start doubting God. You start doubting the word of God. But see, when, you are, when, when your faith is built, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what other people say. You're going you to confess what God's word says. You're going to stay steadfast in the word amen the word of god's power not your words but his word coming through your mouth amen hallelujah all right let's read three again <laughs> who be who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sin sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high Having become so much better than the angels. Now watch this. If he's better than the angels, we are better than the angels. As he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. If he has a more excellent name than they, we have a more excellent name than they. You understand? You are, wherever Christ is, so are you right there with him. You're sitting with him in heavenly places. That's in place of authority. You are above angels. You are more than angels. That's why they have to hearken to when you speak the word of God, they have to obey you. They have to obey what's coming out your mouth. Amen. All right. Back on the syllabus, it says the phrase various times used in verse one refers to the periods of Old Testament history. Okay. And the phrase various ways refers to different methods in which God used to communicate, including visitations, dreams, signs, parables, and events. And in some cases, God still works through these things. You may, some people dream dreams. I, re, I remember Willie. Willie had a, a, a car problem. He didn't know what it was, and God showed him in a dream what it was. You remember that? You said that? God showed him so so God still speaks these way to us in these things in in these ways but mainly he's speaking to us through his son Jesus through his word that's why you have to read that word every day when you got a problem that you can't 
understand or, 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 or see your way through, start reading the word. You may be reading about healing and, and have a problem with fear. And while you're reading about healing, God will give you a revelation on how to deal with the fear. We can be teaching on a subject like, like let's say we're teaching on, on finances, okay? While the word is going forth on finances, you can receive a physical healing. That's how powerful that word is. You can, you can get uh, joy stirred up in your heart just from, just from hearing the word. You don't, that's why even if a person, like even, even, even if we're teaching on marriage, most people say, well, I don't want to come because I ain't going to get married. Well, you may, you may hear something, a word in there, the Holy Spirit may give you a revelation concerning something else and not even marriage. It's the word. See, we, see, we water down the power of the word. But he says signs and wonders shall accompany his word. So when, so when his word is going forth, I'm looking, I'm expecting to receive revelation. Even if, it, even if it's a subject that I may not be having a problem with that's being taught over the pulpit, I still can receive a revelation on something that I am dealing with. We got to get that. I'm telling you, this word is what's happening. This is how God is speaking to us through his word. If you want to have deep conversation with God, my deepest conversation with God is when I'm reading his word and studying his word. I'm serious. Now, don't get me wrong when I'm praying, especially in tongues and stuff. I, I talk to him like that. But my deepest and longest conversation with God is when I'm in his word, studying his word. And he's just, he just speaking to my heart. He's soothing my heart. He's, he's strengthening me through his word. That's what his word is designed to do. His word reaches parts of our mind that you that we're back there where the subconscious is. His word touches where, 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 where you got thoughts that you don't even know there. You got in your subconscious, you got thoughts that, 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 are, that are set up like strongholds, like a fortress. And you don't even know they're there until one day you may be sitting and talking to somebody and a stupid thought come across your mind. So where did that come from? You understand? A crazy thought come. Why? Because you got a subconscious. Well, the Bible says that the word of God penetrates all that. And when we keep that word coming, what it does, it washes out your mind. And in and, and, uh, I think it's uh, Matthew 15, 13, uh, God said that whatever is planted in us and, and that's not of him, he's going to uproot it. He pulls it out. And, and what he does, he gets rid of that plant and then he plants his seed in us and the plant that grows now and the strongholds that grows now is from the word of God. You hear what I'm saying? But you got to, but it's so much junk that we done accumulated over the years that we got to continually wash our thoughts out. That's why if you watch, that's why you, sometimes you can, some, somebody can say something to you and you deal with it, you know, stay in love. Then there are times when somebody say something to you, you're ready to go off on them. You understand? Because you ain't quite got it. We, all of it ain't washed out. And even, and see, it's a continual flushing. You know why? Because even though we're washing our mind with the word, you still, you still have secular stuff going in. If you don't, even if you don't, now Brother Tuck can, can attest to this, they, they don't even watch secular TV. But I bet you they still have secular thoughts. Because you round secular people. You know, even if you don't get it through television, if you don't get it through magazines, you're going to get it through conversations. You got people talking doubt and negative stuff all the time. And as a pastor, you know, he hear everything that everybody got to say. You know, you want to dump it on him. You know what I mean? But I'm telling you, you got to continually wash your mind with that word. You can't stop. You got to do this continually every day. And that's what this is talking about. Jesus is speaking to us through his word. God is speaking to us through Jesus, through his word. Jesus is the word. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, so Jesus is the word. So when you're reading the word, guess what? You're talking to Jesus. If you want to talk to Jesus, read his word. Some people say, well, Kenny Copeland, I, and, and I've heard people say this. Well, Kenny Copeland always talking about how he hear from God. Kenny Copeland stay in the word. He read the word. And God is no respected person. If he speak to Kenny while he read the word, he'll speak to you. But, but we don't want to commit ourselves to that. We want the preacher to read the word for us on Sunday. You got some people don't open their Bible till Sunday. And if you're in one of them churches where the preacher only read one scripture, you're in trouble. 
But that's the only Bible you're going to get for that week. Bless, you know, you're blessed to be in a, in, a, in a church where we use a lot of scripture here. You know what I mean? But some churches, they just open the Bible, read one verse. I seen them close the Bible and go, go from there. You in trouble because you ain't getting no word. What you getting is opinion now. Amen. Y'all all right with that? All right, let's close. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for, re for, for revealing the grace of God through your word. We just love you so much. We thank you, Father, that you loved us enough to send Jesus to die for us. You loved us enough to pour out your grace on us through Jesus Christ. And we just thank you so much. We thank you for your love. We don't focus on our love for you. We focus on your love for us. For it's your love for us that strengthens us. It's your love for us that contains us, that constrains us. And we just thank you so much, Father. We just love you. And Father, I thank you for each and every one here tonight. I thank you, Father, for opening their eyes to see the truth of your word. Opening their eyes to see what you've already provided for them, Father God. And every time they read your word, I thank you, Father, that you reveal to them everything that they need to know, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.